Hi everyone, this is a data insights practice question, the data sufficiency question, quant flavored question, test concepts in algebra and numbers, right? A medium difficulty question. Let's get started. Is A B negative the question? Two statements follow. We'll look at the statements in a while. Before that, let's take a look at the five answer options. Quickly run through them and then run through the process of solving a DS question. But before that, have you subscribed to our channel? If so, thank you so much. If not, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Right? Let's get started. These are the five answer options to any DS question. Statement one alone is sufficient, two is not, answer option is A. Two alone is sufficient, one is not, answer option is B. Independently, the statements are not sufficient, but together they are, then the answer option is C. One alone is sufficient, so is two alone. The statements are independently sufficient, then the answer option is D. Finally, the given data is not sufficient, the answer option is E. Right? So these answer options do not change as far as GMAT goes. Let's quickly run through the process. What is the question that we have? Is A, B negative the question? For any is question, when it comes to data sufficiency, the answer is going to be either an yes or a no. So we're going to say that yes, A, B is negative if it happens to be negative. Or we'll say A, B is not negative. This is the kind of answer that any is question, a B verb question will fetch. When is the data sufficient? The data is sufficient when we have a definite yes or a definite no. The definitiveness of the answer is what we are looking at. On that note, let's quickly start by decoding the question stem. What does A B negative? Is A B negative? How can we write the same thing if we express it as an inequality? Sometimes writing it as an inequality helps us understand the nuances a lot better. We'll write it as is A B less than zero is the inequality. We know that any is question fetches an answer which is an yes or a no. So let's understand when is it an yes. The yes is very obvious. If a b is less than zero, then the answer is yes. Let's focus a little bit more on when the answer is a no. When it's negative, the answer is yes. The thing that comes to our mind immediately is when it is positive, the answer is no. Right? We looked at negative, we looked at positive. When it's negative, it is yes. When it's positive, it's no. What happens if it happens to be zero? Zero is neither positive nor negative. So if it is equal to zero, it is not negative is what it turns out to be. Because zero is neither positive, it's not positive, it's not negative, which means it cannot be negative. So no has two possibilities that A, B is greater than or equal to zero, then the answer is a no. Right? Get this clarity in any DS question. The DS question is an is question. And quickly say, hey, when is it going to be an S? When is it going to be a no? What are all the scenarios for S? What are all the scenarios for no? Note that down in your scratch paper. So that in the examination, if you get AB equals zero, for instance, one of the statements leads us to that conclusion. You wouldn't be wondering, hey, now is it an S or is it a no? Quickly come back to the scratch paper and see AB equals zero, then the answer is a no. We have a definite no if it happens to be that, right? Let's quickly look at statement one, which is the next step in our processing of the DS question. A plus B the whole square is greater than A minus B the whole square, right? The question is, is A B negative? Let's expand this and see what we get. A square plus 2 A B plus B square, this is the left hand side, is greater than A square minus 2 A B plus a B square. Let's take all terms to one side. When A square comes to left hand side, A square minus A square will become zero. So let's cancel it in that sense. When this b square comes to the left hand side, b square minus b square will become 0. So let's throw this also away. Minus 2ab comes to the left hand side, becomes a plus 2ab. So 2ab plus 2ab will become 4ab is greater than 0. Divide both sides of the inequality by a 4. So what you're going to be left with is ab is greater than 0. The question is, is ab less than 0? What statement 1 tells us conclusively is that AB is greater than 0. If AB is greater than 0, then it is not negative. We have a definite no as the answer. If you have a definite answer, even if it's a no, then the data is sufficient, which means that statement 1 alone is sufficient. If 1 alone is sufficient, it could so be that statement 2 is not sufficient. In that case, the answer will be an A. Or statement 2 also can be sufficient. In which case, each statement is independently sufficient. So the answer could be a D. So in any DS question, if you realize statement 1 is sufficient, then our answer options are going to be one of these two, A or D. We can strike off the remaining three, B, C, E. Now to decide whether it's A or D, let's evaluate statement 2 and evaluate statement 2 alone. 2 says that A is equal to B. Multiple possibilities are there. A equals B. If A is equal to a 4, then B will also be a 4. 
if a is equal to minus 2.3 then b can also be that right so essentially we are looking at whether the product is negative or product is positive a is equal to b both could be positive both will take the same values 4 7 8 whatever it is so if a is positive then b will also be positive because a is equal to b the product of two positive numbers is positive the answer to our question if a b is positive then is a b negative we're going to answer it with a no so scenario one when both are positive we got no as the answer let's see whether we're getting a uniform no or we get no sometimes and yes sometimes that will help us determine whether the statement is sufficient or not both could be negative right if a is equal to b if a is a minus 2.3 b will also be a minus 2.3 product of two negative numbers is also positive if a b is positive we don't even have to spend any more time we know that the answer is a no we looked at both being positive looked at both being negative there's a possibility the third possibility which we should not miss out that both could be zeros a is a zero b is a zero the product is a zero if a b is zero what is the answer to our question go back go back what do we have here we have somewhere here we have written it down right if a b is zero the answer is a no we got a b as zero here let's check out what would that then therefore translate to a b is a zero then the answer is going to be no if a b is zero then it is not negative so if a is equal to b then there are three possibilities both could be positive both could be negative both could be zero both positive a b is positive both negative a b is positive the answer is a no both zero a b is zero but the answer to our question is a no so statement 2 also gives us a definite no statement 2 is also therefore sufficient statement 1 was sufficient gave us a no as the answer statement 2 is sufficient it's also giving us a no as an answer each statement is independently sufficient so choice d is the correct answer to this question as always i'll leave you with a question which is a bonus question it's a slight tweak to this question right i've retained the statements as it is i've not changed the statements just change this a little bit I said is a b positive before you shrug off saying that hey that last question was is a b negative is a b positive this question how can anything be different to this check out are you going to get the same answer or do you have to tread carefully some small tweaks like this could could i'm not saying it will could lead to a different answer so evaluate it for its merit right don't quickly come up with an answer saying that for this also the answer is going to be a d it could be a d could be something else post your answers to the comment section of this video best wishes for a gmat preparation